What's up guys, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I make tarantula videos every single week as well as a Tarantula Tuesday newsletter, which you can sign up for um, by either subscribing or visiting the link below. Um, right now I have Spidey here. She's my Chilean rose hair, just hanging out while I'm cleaning uh, where her tank usually is. And I also have a, a very jealous cat who's jealous of all my spiders and wants to be Tumblr famous just like them. Um, but anyway, welcome back uh, if you are a subscriber and if you're new, welcome, period. Um, today we're gonna talk about what you should do if you actually get bitten by a tarantula. So what to do with a tarantula bite. Um, I had done a video, she was like growling. <laughs> okay, so I had done a video uh, a few weeks ago about what does a tarantula bite feel like, and I felt like um, it would also be really useful to talk about what you should do if you actually get bitten by a tarantula, because this is one of the things that you don't want to find out too late, um, or when you're panicking, or when you just got bitten by your tarantula. So um, I feel like it's always good to be prepared, so I wanted to share this information with you. This is not something that you want to be Googling about after it happened, for sure. Um, so, you know, you are obviously, if you're thinking about getting a tarantula or if you're new to the hobby, you are definitely Googling lots of stuff about what kind of equipment that you're going to need for your tarantula. But a lot of people don't actually think of what kind of equipment that you need for yourself um, in case you actually do get injured. Um, in the event that your tarantula escapes or there's an accident and you need to find them and they get defensive or if there's a problem when you're cleaning the tank and your tarantula bolts or gets scared or, you know, if they mistake you for food or any of those reasons, um, accidents happen and it's good to be prepared on your end too. So some things that are really good for you to have on hand, even before anything, maybe even before you get the tarantula, is to have some simple first aid stuff for you. Um, so those things could be uh, things like an antihistamine on hand, something like Benadryl um, or something like that in case you do get bitten. Uh, another thing would be an anti-itch cream. This could be something like hydrocortisone or anything like that. And you also wanna have things like a cold compress. And uh, some people even go as far as to have an EpiPen on hand. Uh, this can be hard to access if you don't already have it, like if you have allergies or something and your allergist gives this to you or you buy it. Um, I think this is really hard to access. I think they tend to be really expensive or you need health insurance. And I'm not even really sure if it's completely necessary, but my feeling is better safe than sorry. I myself have one um, just because I had severe allergies a little bit ago. Um, so, um, you can never be too safe, right? Now, if you're interested in finding out what tarantula bites actually feel like, I definitely recommend um, watching the video that I did recently about it. But um, you know, usually, uh, fangs will leave like little bite marks, but it's also gonna be, um, generally speaking, some localized pain, swelling, perhaps some bleeding. It's usually kind of painful and there's throbbing and that could last for several hours. Uh, of course, it depends on what kind of bite you get or what kind of tarantula it is because uh, sometimes there's been reports of people being uh, in pain for days, depending on what kind of spider it is. Um, and sometimes there is nausea and vomiting. Sometimes that can happen in more severe cases. And the severity depends on what kind of tarantula it is. Old world tarantulas have uh, much more potent venom and usually bigger fangs. So there's more mechanical damage involved uh, and there's probably gonna be more severe symptoms. Um, but that's not to say that new world tarantulas can't also pack a bite as well. That is uh, pretty potent as well. Um, but it also depends on, of course, where this bite happened, uh, where on your body did it happen? Uh, how big are you? For example, you know, someone who's smaller or like a kid, uh, if they get bitten, this, the effects are probably going to be much more severe than if it was a, a large adult. Um, as well as your own sensitivity or if you have um, sensitive skin or, you know, if you're some people might be more apt to get irritated more than others. Now, if you get a tarantula bite and you think that your symptoms are pretty mild and you want to treat yourself at home, here are some things that you can do. You can first wash the site with soap and water just to make sure that it's clean and nothing gets in the wound. Then to reduce swelling and induce numbness, you can put either a cold compress or an ice cube on the, on the um, place where you got bitten. You can also apply a paste of powdered meat tenderizing if you want to reduce irritation. 
Then you can apply an anti-itch cream such as cortisone to take the irritation down even more and kind of take care of some of the itching if that's happening for you. And then you want to just monitor yourself. Um, if you have someone with you, that's great. But even if you're alone, you want to be very aware of what's happening to you in case things get worse. And I'm going to get into the worst symptoms in a second. And you want to know these symptoms. So definitely make sure that you remember this. So if you get bitten by an old world tarantula or you know, you're having a very severe reaction, um, there are some warning signs that you definitely want to be aware of. And you know, you don't want to play with this, you might have to go to the hospital, especially if you're having trouble breathing or having chest pains. So I'm going to list a few things that should be watched out for and taken very seriously. If you're experiencing ad abdominal cramps and nausea, uh, chest tightness or trouble breathing, which I mentioned before, a headache, if you're getting rashes like hives all over your body, and if you are getting a headache, which is, um, especially if this is accompanied by anxiety, you definitely don't want to play around. You want to seek medical attention. There are tons of tarantula owners in forums who have been bitten by, you know, some pretty intense spiders, and they'll say that they just muscled through it. Um, it's really up to you, but these are severe warning signs that you want to look out for, and you got to make that judgment call. I would say err on the side of caution, especially if you're new to tarantulas, because you just don't know. Now, if you do actually go to the emergency room for a tarantula bite, here are some things that, that they're going to do. They're going to monitor your vital signs. They're going to take your temperature. Um, they want to take your pulse. They're going to monitor your breathing as well as your blood pressure. They might also look at your chest closer with like either an x-ray. Um, they might give you fluids. They might uh, give you some stronger medicine. They might also give you breathing support. They're going to do a bunch of things, um, but you can help them out by knowing exactly what tarantula bit you and all the details of the bite. So um, just keeping in mind that stuff. So now that you know what to do in case you do get bitten, I wanna talk about the most important part of this, which is decreasing your risk of getting bitten. Uh, so I always like to talk about prevention because I think it's really important, especially for new people getting into the hobby. So there's a lot you can actually do to decrease your chances of being bitten. One is learning the warning signs and tarantula body language. Uh, tarantulas usually will not bite you without giving you some type of warning. Like uh, they will either kick hairs if they're a new world tarantula or they will rear up um, and expose their fangs to you. Uh, now there are some tarantulas, especially old worlds that are very fast and you might not see it coming. But I would say in most cases and in many cases, there are, there is the body language of a tarantula who's not having a good time and wants you to leave it alone. So you want to be very conscious and mindful of this. So I think it's more about really being mindful, focused, and also respectful of your tarantula space. Of course, accidents happen when we're cleaning the tanks or you know, we're, maybe we're rehousing them or something like that. Mistakes happen, but monitoring your tarantula's body language and being respectful to them when they are giving you the body language that they want to be left alone, I think can definitely um, decrease your chance of being bitten. Also, um, not being too handling friendly. Uh, a lot of newbies want to hold their tarantulas and I think it's important to know ahead of time that this isn't a creature that wants to be handled a lot or at all. Um, so, you know, if you push your tarantula, there's going to be a consequence in most cases. So you want to be really respectful, know how to correctly handle them, how to pick them up correctly and safely, um, how to behave around them so they don't get scared, um, and how to read their body language. Um, these are some of the most, the best ways that you can actually prevent a bite before it even happens. Um, but hopefully after watching this video, you'll be prepared in case it does. Like I said, accidents happen and sometimes it's nobody's fault. You know, these are unpredictable creatures and this is the risk that we take when we're actually getting one. So we have to be aware of everything. Um, and I do want to just wrap up and say that um, tarantulas will not ever bite you out of being malicious, evil, or aggressive, despite what, you know, the reputation is. Uh, tarantulas will only attack or bite you because they're feeling scared or defensive um, or that you are a threat to them. So, you know, if you do get bitten, don't take it as your tarantula is evil or has turned on you or anything like that. Um, you know, I mean... As long as you respect them, you're gonna be cool. A tarantula will never really come at you for no reason. Um, so, you know, of course, some tarantulas have a more touchy temperament than others, but it's important to know that. And usually when you respect them and give them their space and leave them alone when they want to be left alone, 
um, you should drastically decrease your chances of getting a bite. So anyway, I hope that was really helpful and I hope that it makes you feel better prepared for when you actually do get a tarantula or if you have tarantulas but you don't have a plan in place in case uh, something like this happens. Um, I hope it was useful to you um, because I, you know, of course I care so much about the safety of tarantulas and their well-being but um, you know, it's also about the owner and uh, increasing our comfort level and our confidence in the hobby. So, um, and just letting us be prepared for things when things do go wrong. And hopefully we can avoid that. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. Um, if you have any other great tips for um, if you've gotten bitten or uh, no tips for when you get bitten, that would be awesome. I think it would be useful for me and uh, other people trying to learn about this stuff. So I would really appreciate if you could share that in a comment below. If you like this video or learn something from it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Um, and uh, you can also check out my other tarantula stuff in the links below. Um, I do have a tarantula magazine that I put out every two months and a tarantula Tuesday newsletter that you can sign up for. And I do have tarantulaheaven.com, which is my educational website about tarantulas where you can find more in-depth articles about um, tarantula care and husbandry. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.